Welcome back to these uh, lectures on Western Civilization, Part 1. Uh, we're going to spend the next few lectures talking about the Protestant Reformation. Uh, let me give you the significances first. And then uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about some of the causes and, uh, and then the case made by the Reformers against the Church. Uh, we'll do another lecture on Martin Luther specifically. Uh, we'll do another one on John Calvin and uh, the rise of Calvinism. And then finally, we'll talk about the Catholic response uh, to the Reformation. We call this the Counter-Reformation. So let's start with significances. Uh, the greatest significance of the Protestant Reformation is that it shatters the Christian unity of Europe. Um, the, the Catholic Church, Church's hold over the minds of men are going to be, or minds of men are going, is going to be uh, turned upside down here. And the unity of the Christian faith in Europe is going to be uh, shattered by this uh, Reformation in the 16th century. Uh, other significances, um, the Reformation will lead to a series of uh, uh, catastrophic wars in Europe. The wars of religion, they're called, uh, pitting Protestant against Catholic. Uh, another significance of the Reformation, it's going to aid in the creation of uh, what we think of today as the modern nation state as the kingdoms of Europe are now going to be divided uh, by religion. Um, there's an increasing sense of uh, nationalism and the emergence of modern nation states as opposed to weak feudal kingdoms uh, where everyone uh, was basically on the same page regarding religion. Uh, after the Reformation people are not going to be on the same page. That, that uniformity is, it will vanish. Other significances, we're going to have a rise of uh, witchcraft or at least of accusations of witchcraft. I believe when uh, people's uh, religious world is, is shattered in this way, uh, they look for scapegoats. They look for someone to, uh, to blame for this upheaval. And uh, so you're going to have a, an upsurge in witchcraft accusations. Uh, it's worth asking uh, why uh, these accusations are directed mostly towards women. And um, historians believe there's a couple of reasons for this. One, women are not physically uh, strong enough to defend themselves, generally. Two, and perhaps more importantly, is the, uh, goes back to the, uh, the Christian archetypes of women. There's generally two, uh, Eve and Mary. Mary, of course, is perfect. Eve is not um, disobedient, perhaps greedy, lustful. Uh, things like this. So witches are born of that Eve archetype. Now um, women, uh, it's probably fair to say that uh, the medieval woman was viewed as lesser, a lesser man. She was uh, not as smart, not as big. Um, she was kind of viewed as an empty vessel uh, in which the devil could pour his mischief. Women were vain and gossipy. And uh, so it was natural that they should be accused of witchcraft. Um, other significances, the, uh, uh, the Reformation is going to uh, be spread to the New World. Uh, when we think of the, uh, the pilgrims, as they're called, that settle in Massachusetts in, uh, in the early 17th century, uh, these, uh, these are Protestants, quite often Calvinist, uh, seeking a place in the New World in which to practice their peculiar brand of, uh, of Christianity. So Protestantism uh, will be spread in this way. Um, causes, some long-term causes of the Reformation. And there are a few here. Uh, the Great Schism of the 14th century where there were multiple popes this tended to weaken people's faith in the church. Uh, the church apparently is, uh, had uh, become more political as opposed to spiritual uh, and dividing itself up. The uh, other causes would include 
uh, I've heard one historian talk about uh, the impact of the Black Death, uh, the bubonic plague, uh, and its destruction of uh, Latin speakers. Uh, Latin, of course, was the language of the church and of educated men. And uh, the diminishment of Latin speakers led to the rise of the vernacular languages, uh, the common provincial languages, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, French, and that this had a, an impact on the church. Um, and of course, the Black Death also weakened people's faith in the church because uh, the local priest was afraid to come to the house of the sick, fearing that he too uh, would catch the plague and die. And of course, if the priest has no more faith than that, then uh, what is the common layperson supposed to think? So we have these long-term causes and I want to take a few minutes and talk about the case made by the reformers against the Catholic Church, uh, the errors, the, uh, how the church had been uh, led astray by its leadership. Uh, much uh, these complaints or this case made against the church, a lot of it uh, centers around money. So we'll talk for a moment here about the church's uh, income. Church makes income in a variety of ways. A tithing, of course, is the most common. Uh, but there are other ways. The church sold to its parishioners, I guess what today we would call long-term disability insurance. And it works sort of like this. The parishioner will uh, bequeath their property to the church upon their death. Uh, in exchange, the church will take care of the parishioner when they're old, sick, lame, or blind. Uh, so this is an exchange for long-term care uh, and property. Another way that the church made money was to sell, I guess today we'd call it fire insurance. And this was not fire insurance to protect the hovel you lived in. This was fire insurance to protect you from uh, eternal damnation and hell. Uh, again, you would bequeath your property to the church upon your death and the church would, in return, intercede for you with God uh, to assure uh, your final destination would be heaven and not hell. Other ways of, uh, of raising money, of course, are indulgences. This is probably the most famous. Uh, Luther talks about indulgences in his 95 Theses, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next lecture. Um, the church had lost its way. Uh, the reformers uh, referred to uh, imitatio Christi, the, the Latin phrase, to, to be like Jesus, to be like Christ. Uh, and the reformers said the church had lost its, its mission. Instead of looking after the spiritual needs of its people, it had now begun to act as a great empire. It was more concerned with money and wealth and status that it, than it was in the salvation of its parishioners. So it had lost its mission, lost its way. Uh, reformers said that uh, the biggest bribes in Europe are paid at the Vatican, that the church had become corrupt, that the leadership of the church, it's uh, the Pope and the cardinals and bishops, uh, were not chosen for their piety. They were chosen instead for uh, their political connections or their personal wealth. Uh, this clearly uh, diverges from Imitatio Christi, that original mission of the church. Uh, the reformers said that uh, the local priest was often un, uh, unprepared or unqualified for his duties. Uh, they, they accused the local priest of spending more time in the brothel than in the chapel or in the, uh, the local tavern. Uh, some priests were even illiterate. So these charges against the church uh, extend from corruption to uh, the way that they gather money uh, to the practices of priests at the, uh, at the local level. Uh, the two men who are going to uh, take these, make both make these charges and then follow them to their conclusions uh, are Martin Luther and John Calvin, and uh, they will be the uh, topics of our next discussion. Thank you.